Hello and welcome back. So in here we want to fix a few things. For example, when I click on the image, I want to go to the comment area where I can view the full post here instead of having to click on comment. And then not only that, we can show when somebody was online and if they are online right now. Okay, so what we're going to start with, the simple one is the image here because all we need to do is create a link. So what we'll do is go to our folder and let's go to post.php where there is a single post in there. So right in there, we will go to where there is an image. So where do we put an image? Let's cover image, that's not it and post image is this is the one right there okay so at this point i just want to put a uh, the link which is exactly on the comment part so where is the comment so this is the one right there yeah single post that's the link so this is the link that i'm looking for so I will copy this link. In fact, I just need this part up to there. Let me come back to image and paste it there. Now this is PHP, of course, at this point. So I will have to do an echo with a single quote outside like so. And then of course I will do another echo to close the tag don't forget the semicolon now the issue here is we have this php echo here and since we're already echoing there we have to remove that so what we will do is remove that put the single quote and concatenate so we're adding to that delete that add and then put back the in single quote like that. So let's come back here and see if anything has changed. So now as you can see, there's a pointer on the image and when I click, it takes me to the image. So because the reflex of somebody is to click on the image itself and not to look for the comment button. So this can actually help. So the other thing is we want to see when somebody was online or offline. So what we do there is if we go to our table, the users table, you will notice that we do have a column called online, but it has zeros in there because we haven't actually put anything there. And I actually don't know why my date has these four zeros. So let me go in. Um, where is this uh, in the table structure i don't know why it says year here it's supposed to be a timestamp so i think this was a mistake on my part or something this is supposed to be date time right so remove the length and say in case yours is like mine uh, you can change that let's come back to browse Okay, that looks much better. So now the thing is, uh, we we need to have this online uh, column functioning. So the thing is, how do we know when somebody was online? Then that's we know that when they access the website, it means they are online because we don't really have. We're not using JavaScript in here. I want to use the PHP to know when somebody was online. So when they access any page on our website, we can know that they were online. So the best thing to do, instead of having to go to every single page and putting something there that will tell us when they accessed that page, instead, what we can do is look for a page that is always loaded regardless. So we do have such a page and inside classes, because we have the auto loader, that always runs but we have uh, functions as well that always runs even connect that always runs too 
So let's see in here, we have the auto loader. So we can put something here if we want to, no problem. So maybe actually that's fitting. We can just put it right at the top here. But yeah, functions comes in there. So it was about to create a function. So what we can do instead, uh, in the interest of keeping functions in the same location, let's open our functions page and let's create a function called set online to the very end and let's create one function is that correct okay seems about right function uh set i don't know set online uh, you can give it any name you want so we don't need to pass anything here because what we're looking for is the user uh, session so which is available everywhere where is that session my book user id so in the database we have get is it get one user or get single user so we can use that where is database connect okay there we go so they save this read oh actually this is not the place it's in the user so there's get friends get user so there we go so this is the one user where we get one record from here so this is in the user class so what we do is we go back to our functions.php to the very bottom so i think what i can do here is just pass in the id just say user id or we can just say id just to make keep things simple and so here what i want to do is read from the actually since i already have the user id i don't actually need to read i can simply save so all I need to do is create a query. So let's do that query. Select, actually we need to update. Now, uh, one option you could do is because we are constantly going to be updating the users table, which may or may not be a good idea depending on uh, certain issues because if you make a mistake and delete the user account that could be something big so an alternative would be to create another table which has the online thingy and then we have a user id uh, we have a user id there and then that's where we put the online thing so that once we update that it's not really a big deal but you can try and Considering the knowledge you have at this point, you can try and do that. For now, we're just going to use what already exists. So I will say update users set online is equal to, we're going to create something called online here, a variable. And then I'm going to say limit one. Actually, I need to tell it where to save. So I'm going to say where user ID where user ID is equal to, uh, we have our supplied ID there. So we're going to use that ID. Let's put our quotes still and then limit one. So let's see here. What have I done? Okay, so update users set online is good online where user ID, uh, that looks fine. So here, just to sanitize the data, just in case, we're just going to say uh, ID is equal to int ID. Or we're just going to say, uh, what do we say? Uh, if, let's put a very definite thing. If not is numeric. If not is numeric ID, which means it's not a number, which it's supposed to be, return will do nothing. 
but if it's a number let's put it there and then set online is equal to online so let's find what online is so online will be a timestamp now this timestamp will be in a format of seconds so online is equal to time like so that's it so this one is a uh, i think it's a 14 digit or 12 digits i'm not very sure there maybe 10 digits i'm not really sure but you can simply echo time just to echo this one just to see the digit itself now this time because computers were this time thing was uh, declared in 1970 so what time returns is the number of seconds that have passed since 1970 to date so just the number of seconds so every second that number is added there's a one added to it that way you know uh, how many seconds have passed so that's what we're going to save the number of sec seconds since 1970 so you may be asking uh, why is that useful uh, you will see in a minute when we try to retrieve Oh, I can simply explain it. If we know how many seconds ago uh, was 1970, for example. So once we, we are given that number, let's say, for example, let's just imagine the number of seconds is 10 since 1970 right now one, when I access the page. So we have 10 seconds. But then if I access the page later on, there won't be 10. There might be 20 seconds that have passed since 1970. So all I need to do is subtract that previous 10 with the 20 that I have now. And then I'm going to know that 10 seconds have passed since the last time I accessed this page. So this is the kind of thing we're going to be doing. So first of all, let me go here and just copy the DB options here. So DB is a new DB, of course, and we're going to read Actually, we're just going to write to the database here. So read, is it write or save? I think it is save we are supposed to use. Okay, something like that. So we don't need to, even if there's an error here, we don't need to know about it because this is simply a luxury and not a critical part of the app. So we can let it go instead of showing errors and such. So save query and that's about it. So now because I want it to run every time this uh, page is loaded. So I'm simply going to actually initialize it right here at the top. I'm just going to say set online so that it actually runs right here. But I will need to supply a user ID. So I will do that with, um, where is the, the session, my book, there we go. So now the thing is, I have to be very sure that that actually exists. So I will say, if is set that, if that is set, then we can easily set online like so using the function below. Okay, so I think that actually does it. So let's see what profile. So I'm loaded. I'm logged in as this first user here. As you can see, there's a zero in the online section there. So I will refresh my page. And I get a defined variable. So I can take a quick guess where that line is. That's line 340. So the reason it's undefined is because I'm supposed to use that there. Okay, that should do it now. So let's go here and refresh. And you'll see the number here. So this is the number of seconds that have passed since 1970. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look so big, but it is quite big. Okay, so now every time we... I refresh this page this is what is there so how do people know when i was last online so luckily we do have a uh, what do we have here we have the time function the time class inside classes 
so this is the time class here and we have get time there so we can use this uh, yes we can use that 